If you have been vibe coding enough, you must have experienced problem where you ask cursor to implement a small change, but it just map up your whole project. Or cursor is not aware of all the dependencies in your code base and implement something that leads to loads of errors. This is a very common issue of AI coding agent in general, no matter which platform you're using. But there's one technique that should promising improvements that will make your cursor make way less errors, which is giving your AI coding agent a task management system that helps it to understand overall implementation plan and also control the amount of context goes into each step when it is implementing specific tasks. I was able to build a fully functional multiplayer online drawing game where both players can draw image of given word and we'll send the result to GPT-40 where it'll look at image and give evaluation and pick up the winner. And this whole game is actually imprinted by cursor with just one shot without much error, which is absolutely insane. That's why today I want to show you what my workflow is and how can you adopt it for your own project. And before you use any of those tools I just introduced, people has been hacking together task management workflow to improve performance for a while. At its core, it basically means you ask Cursor to break down your complex PRD into small tasks and have a document where Cursor can have access to to track and maintain what tasks are coming and what tasks are already been done. And this is a quick example from Ailey. The most basic implementation is in your Cursor project, you will create a Cursor rule and it looks something like this. Basically a rule where you tell Cursor to always refer to task.md to keep track about what tasks they already been done and what tasks haven't. And with this one, we can just create a task.md file and give it a prompt. I want to build a X app. Help me breaking down into small tasks of a core MVP feature and add to task.md. So that cursor will create a list of tasks here. And after cursor will finish every single task, it will just come back and mark those tasks as completed. So it has a context of the overall implementation plan. With this method, it already helped a ton for executing complex tasks with cursor. But tools like Cloud Task Master and Boomerang Task from Ruko bring even more sophisticated task management behavior into the AI coding agents. For example, for Task Master AI, it is a command line package that you can run in cursor or WinServe directly, where it utilizes Cloud 3.7 or more advanced model to look at the PRD you have and break that down into small subtasks by running a simple command line like Task Master Parse PRD. And what's really amazing about it is that it will break down tasks in logical order, consider all the dependencies between different tasks. So you won't have a situation where a cursor implements something but require other dependencies that hasn't been implemented yet. And it also has useful command line like analyze complexities to use perplexity and the cloud to analyze how complicated each task is. And if certain task complexity score is very high, it will allow you to expand on those tasks further. And by breaking down those complex tasks into even smaller bits, the success rate of it delivering a functional application just increased dramatically. And Roku's Boomerang task is also something similar. It gives AI agents tools like new tasks to breaking down a complex project into small bits and keep track about progress. Those tools have completely changed my workflow. So I'm going to quickly take you through what's my new best practice vibe coding workflow with those new tools. But before we dive into that, I know many of you are trying to build AI agents for business, but there are many pitfalls I saw people fail into at delivering successful production agents. That's why I want to introduce you to this research HubSpot did, where they interviewed tons of business and startups who have been launching AI agents for the past 12 months to understand which AI agent use case actually drove huge amount of business value and ROI versus ones that sounds fancy, but actually very difficult to deliver value and which signal customers are deploying huge amount of budgets to buy AI agent solution. They include lots of real world success stories and articulate those learnings into frameworks that you can use to build your next agents. From which use case is more suitable for chatbot versus actual autopilot agents? How do you determine which task is best for AI agents versus more traditional workflow automation, as well as list of common pitfalls that many other people encounter, including myself, when deploying production agents and best practice of how other people resolve that. Like what's the best practice for you to build integration into existing systems? This helped bring a lot of clarities and many mistakes I personally experienced. So if you're planning to build agents, I highly recommend you go and have a read. And this is totally free. I have put the link in the description below for you to download. Now let's talk about my new AI coding workflow with task management systems. Firstly, let's talk about Roku's Boomerang task feature. And if you don't know Roku, Roku you can almost consider it as an open source cursor that lives inside Visual Studio Code. It is totally free to use. All you need to do is just provide your own entropic key, and then it will just work like any other AI coding agent that you've been using. But what's really cool about Roku is that unlike cursor, where you only have a few predefined agent mode, Roku allows you to create your own mode. Like at default, they will provide coding agent, architect agent that will help you do the planning, debug agent that help you figure out where the error is. But you can also build 
custom modes like boomerang mode, where it will be focusing on planning and breaking down the plan into smaller manageable pieces. Think of it like delegating your work to specialized assistant. Each subtask runs in its own context. So I can choose the boomerang mode that I just customized and then say, help me build a to-do app. At top, you can see that it will keep track about how many token consumption is, as well as the total amount of API cost. And it will firstly delegate a planning task to the architect agent. And this architect agent will have this system prompt where it will continuously confirm with me about the requirements. And then it will start planning out the project, breaking down into specific feature, figure out things like user story, key feature, components, project structure, state management, and many more. So it has a full understanding about all the dependencies between different functions. I can give feedback in the middle. And once the plan is finished and breaking down to small tasks, it can switch to the code mode to start generating the code. And the code agent will start executing different tasks based on the plan and then complete the actual application for me. And you can see the result here is very high quality and it even have functionality built in where the agent will be able to run the application in the browser, see the result to automate testing as well. And with this one, the result already feels better than what I got out of box from Cursor. But on the other hand, Cloud Task Master integrate much more deeply into Cursor and WinSurf. First, let's install the Task Master AI. We can open terminal in any folder and do npm install dash g Task Master dash AI. And once it's finished, you can run a few different commands. One will be Task Master init. This will set up the project inside the folder. So you can just do Task Master init directly. But I would suggest you set up the project first. Like if you are building a Next.js project with chassis in, you can just do this command. And once it's done, we can do cursor my app. Inside here, we can do Task Master init. This will ask for the project name, and uh, I will just call it my app. Description doesn't really matter. You can skip all of those stuff, and then just let it set things up. And what will happen now is that on the left side, you will firstly see it add a few cursor rules. Some of them are generic one, like this cursor rule basically teach cursor, how can it add new cursor rules? So as you go deep into the implementation, you can ask it to reflect and creating rules about the mistake it make, for example. And it will follow these rules to create the next cursor rules. And this self improve is basically the same thing. It kind of try to get cursor to do this proactively. And the step workflow is where it teach cursor about all the commands it will need to actually check all the tasks in the backlog. And if you're using WinServe, there will be WinServe rule here as well. Inside the scripts folder, it provides a structure about what does a PRD can look like. But the most important one is that it will have this .env.example file. What you need to do is swap out this entropic key as well as perplexity key here. So entropic is a model that will be used to break down your PRD into small tasks. And they also use perplexity to do some research. So if part of the task is using a new package that just released, then it will actually use perplexity to fetch the latest developer documents and include those into the task information. So I recommend you add both API key here. And once you did that, we can start creating our PRD. There are many different ways you can create PRDs. If you're in the AI Builder Cloud and building already, you will have access to two tools like TanksCoder.dev, where it will help you generate PRD automatically and fill in all the gaps for the features that you might not think of. So if you're already in the AI Builder Cloud, you can use this tool to get the PRD here. But if you don't have access, you can also just chat with the cursor agent, use that to help you generate PRD. For example, I can just say, help me build an online game like Scribble. But instead of a human guess word, it will be large language model guess word. So each round, all users will be given a same word and they have 60 seconds to draw the image. In the end, all images will be sent to OpenAI to be for all and let it choose which image is closer to the word. Now play the role as the engineer manager, help me think through what are the core features of implementing such game. And then it will spit out the core functionalities. Obviously, I can chat back and forth, but once I finish, I can just say, great, now let's help me build the core MVP features requirements into prd.txt using the example uh, prd.txt as reference, which is what we have uh, shown here. And then you will see a PRD has been created with good amount of details, and I will accept that. So now, since we have this PRD generated, the next step, we can use this command taskmaster parse DRD to breaking down this PRD into small tasks. And this is where the power of Taskmaster begin. So I will do this Taskmaster parse PRD scripts slash PRD dot TXT. Okay, so I had this arrow, uh, just need making sure you remove this dot example. And let's do it again. So now it will start creating task files based on this PRD. And you will see here where we have task folder. It has all the tasks that created from Taskmaster. What we can do is we can do Taskmaster list. And this will show you the list of tasks that it has been created. What's really cool about Taskmaster task list is on the right side, you can see here's a dependencies column. So when you're breaking down tasks, it will actually list out the tasks in a logical order and making sure there are clear dependencies mapped out. So when it implements, it can implement in the right order. Meanwhile, there are also some pretty useful commands it have this command called analyze complexity. What this will do is that I can do taskmaster and analyze complexity. 
This was basically send all the tasks I created to Cloud 3.7, as well as Perplexity. Basically asked it to just evaluate how complicated or how difficult it is to implement this feature. And once it is done, I can do task master complexity report. It will show me the evaluation of each task and its complexity score. But what's really useful is for those complex tasks, it also gives you the prompt that you can copy. At the moment, you can't really copy this directly. The UI just break up, but you can just copy the first one and go to the complexity report and find the specific ID, which is this one, and we can copy the expansion prompt. So here you generate a prompt detailed technical implementation of HTML5 Canva component, including drawing tools, input handling across all devices. So I can just do this. And now it's breaking down that specific task into smaller ones. And as we know, once a complex task is breaking down to smaller one, it is more likely to succeed without any error. And you can continue doing that um, by adding another one for the task number five. So you get drill. Uh, basically, you can do this process back and forth for a few times until you're happy with the backlog here. You can also do things like update as well. So if later down the road, you decide to like change the plan, you can also do task master update ID equal to like four and prompt equal to something like make sure we use three JS. And what will happen is that once you give this prompt, it will actually update the whole plan based on this new instruction, which is really, really helpful. But once it's done, you can do task master list with subtasks. This will show all the subtasks here directly. So it will make it easier for you to review all the tasks here. So that's pretty much it. Once we've done this, you can just go to the cursor agent and say, let's start implementing the app based on tasks we created using Taskmaster. Let's check the next most important task first. So you might have this arrow here that it is reusing the wrong command. Uh, so I will just tell you, do not use script dev.js, use Taskmaster instead. Just go list all tasks created and follow the plan. Then it will see the plan and decide to implement the first one first. And as it work on the task, it will also set the status of this task to be in progress. And here, since I actually turn on the YOLO mode of cursor, which means it didn't ask me for permission for running any command lines, I can basically just go drink a coffee and let it do the work. And as it complete, it will mark this task as done and move on to the next one by doing Taskmaster next. But now when you're in YOLO mode, uh, I think cursor, it will limit to 25 two calls if you're using the Cloud 3.7, but you can actually put on Gemini 2.5 Pro Max. This will allow you to skip this limit and you just do like 200 two calls without any pause here. All right, so it's actually pretty crazy. It just continue executing tasks one up another and generate a whole bunch of files, probably a few thousand lines of code. And let's just run that first. Um, so I will do npm run dev. All right, so if I try to open this, it has a lobby building and authentication building, so I can give a name, choose an avatar, start playing, and my user has been created. I can set how much time we'll have for drawing, uh, difficulty, and whether it's a public game or not. So it's pretty good. Uh, I can create, a, okay, it looks like the actual game inside hasn't been done yet, but it's pretty impressive about how much it is able to deliver in just one go. And I can come back to do taskmaster list with subtasks so you can see that it done the uh, first four tasks, but it haven't fully finished the development game run logic into my UI component. Maybe that's why the actual game room is not showing up. So I can ask it continue to implement. But you saw that I had this arrow here, and then I can prompt it now reflect the arrows you made and creating new cursor rules to making sure you don't make those mistakes again. Now you can see that it actually adding new cursor rules about Next.js app router. Uh, though for some reason, it didn't actually create the content, which is a bit weird. Let me accept this one. So for now, I just copy paste manually. I'm probably to update cursor rules to making sure it will be saved properly. But now I'm going to continue task. Now let's check what is the next task to complete to a point where we can do some quick testing of the drawing. Okay, after another 15 minutes of it just doing the task by itself, I got this game that's kind of fully functional where I can give it a name, choose my avatar, start playing, and also create a room called Jason's Room. I can set a timer about how long people can draw as well as number of runs, the difficulties. And if I create a room, other people will be able to see the room I created as well. Click on join, we will see multiple players in the room. And if I start this, I will have this Canva where people can start drawing to describe what this uh, word is. And on the top right corner, there's also a timer document how much time is left. And once it's finished, it will send both the result to ChatGPT and GPT will look at the image and give the description and evaluation, pick up the winner to get the points and then move on to the next one. So it's pretty amazing that it did a whole multiplayer games like this by itself in 20 minutes. So this is how much performance gain you can get by equipped cursor with the right task management systems. 
And what's really exciting is that this is just beginning. I can imagine those tools and systems became way better in a few months time. I also interviewed the creator of Taskmaster Project, where he gave more detailed breakdown about the best practice workflow to fully unleash the power of Taskmaster and exciting things that they are working on right now. If you're interested, you can join the AI Builder Club where I put the full interview and workflow inside the community for you to check out, as well as a bunch of other learnings and tips from industry experts for both vibe coding and building production-ready AI agents. And you will also have access to tools like 10x Coder Dev where it will help you generate bulletproof cursor PRD, as well as Next.js board play that already have all payment backend database set up so you can launch your CS in just a weekend. I put the link in the description below for you to join if you're interested. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll continue sharing new tips and workflows I learned. Thank you and I'll see you next time.